This video is about promoting biodiversity. Now, one of the key principles of regenerative agriculture is to promote biodiversity. I think it's one of the most overlooked of the principles. Now, I'm showing here is pictures from my garden. It's in the fall. It's one of my favorite times. And I think I owe the success of my garden to the diversity of plants I have here. Now, if you're looking at cover crops, you'll find that there's been multiple studies that show that multi-species cover crops do much better than single-species cover crops. Now, there's a great YouTube video called Sustainable Farming and Ranching in a Hotter, Drier Climate by Gabe Brown. I go to YouTube and I look that up. It's a great video. In it, he shows one of the experiments that they did in North Dakota where they planted single species cover crops and then a multi species cover crop planted in the spring and then had a very dry summer, a big drought. They thought the experiment was a failure, but when they went and looked, as you can see here, this is one of the single species cover crop. It's just totally dried out and dead. But the multi species cover crop did fine. I mean, look at it. It's it's flourishing. And this video he shows another example. This is in Canada of triticale. You can see one side is just monocropping and the other side is the triticale with cover crop mixed in and it flourished. This is why biodiversity is extremely important. Now remember to consider biodiversity in your vegetable garden. Now one way to get this diversity is with companion planting. There's lots of resources both on internet and in books about companion planting. Uh, one always jumps to mind is Carrots Love Tomatoes. It's a famous book on which plants to mix in your garden. Historically, a lot of people would just put a single row of, let's say, carrots and a single row of cabbage, a single row of beans look into mixing them up all together. They help each other out, uh, much like the experiment showed that I mentioned earlier. Try things out, but just be careful. There are a few things that just don't like to, to grow together. Also, don't hesitate to put cover crop in your vegetables. Now, when I grow my corn, I like to fill in with a cover crop. I know that the corn is going to be much taller than anything I'm planting so it's no problem it helps them out quite a bit if you are concerned about reseeding from the cover crop there's a couple things you can do you can either cut the plant don't pull it cut the plant before it goes to seed or put in some cover crop late enough that you know it will not seed in time before you get a first frost. Now, for me, that would be uh, like Milo, which is a type of sorghum. I know if I put that in my vegetable garden in uh, mid to late July, it doesn't have enough time to go to seed where I live, so I don't have to worry about that coming back. Now, for perennial gardens, you will want to do some planning. Uh, perennial gardens includes things like food forests, orchards, even flower gardens. Now, in permaculture, there's a concept known as plant guilds. These are groupings of plants that are known to do well together. Now, you can go on the internet and find all sorts of information on these plant guilds. For example, there's a, an apple tree guild in which it talks about what plants do well around an apple tree or they can be an oak guild, or whatever type of plants you're growing. One of the greatest resources on this is a book called Gaia's Garden by Toby Hemingway. In there, he has numerous examples of plant guilds and tree guilds. I hope this video shows to you that whatever you're growing, always try to promote biodiversity. Work and Beauty is a 501c3 nonprofit based in West Central New Mexico.
We operate on donations from people like you. Please consider donating money for our cause by either sending a check to our address listed here or through our website at workinbeauty.org. Thank you very much.